All right, and that epic song takes us right into the cast today. Hello and good morning, everybody. Rifkin coming at you with some StarCraft, and unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on your point of view, it's just Rifkin. Um, as those who tuned in last night probably uh, heard me ask F if she wanted to come join me today. She totally wanted to, but some real-life things prevented her from getting any sleep, unfortunately. So she's not going to be available for the uh, the cast today. So we'll just go back to the originally planned solo cast. It would have been nice. It would have been nice to have a partner, but uh, it is what it is. Um, the first match I'm looking at the right off the bat has got to be Solar versus Keen on these brackets. Although the the signups here are just absolutely phenomenal. And like a big part of me says like either nobody's got anything to do today or they're all hoping the prize will hits $2,000 again. Uh, I'm not sure what will actually end up happening. But um, if we can't get into this one, we may do Jakshi and Hush because Solar is currently AFK. Uh, give me a sec here. Jakshi and Hush might just be the better alternative. Uh, I also don't see Keen in the channel at the moment either. So, uh, I mean, I, I, I highly doubt Keen will skip out. He's always around. Yeah, he's just on AFK mode. Both him and Solar AFK. Um, if Hush is here, I will cast you. Um, so as long as Josh's opponent's here, we'll, we'll, we'll jump over to that one instead. Um, hopefully, but I don't, I don't know if Hush is in chat. Hush is here. All right, let's get Joshi and let's get Hush into this. All right. Casting Jokshi and Hush since Solar and Keen are both AFK. Golden, you want in or you do another? Uh, All right. Um. We'll get into the things in the important stuff in just a moment. I gotta make sure we're up on Team Liquid and that I have everything going. I should probably also tweet about the matches because there's quite a few good ones. Uh, oh, Cloudy's playing against Sue. That's another one I think I would have loved to have caught. But uh, let's see. All right. Uh, first match, Jokshi versus Hush. By the way, guys, I got some new glasses. Did you notice? What do you think? Let me know. Uh, TVP best of three. Saywin, oh. ready? No problem. All right, Hush needed about 30 seconds to a minute um, while I do this. That works out well for me. Who needs to also apparently get Twitch alerts up? Or it's up, but it's just not... Make a noise, or I'll have to look at that in a second. Thank you, Brothol Brothorly, for the 11 month resub. Almost hitting his part two mark. Uh, some people were resubbed during the rebroadcast and donated, so I'd like to quickly think, oh my god, I'm on fire for the 10 month resub. Uh, AKA, AKA June. Oh, cheered for one bit. Um, Baby Hades donated $10. This is a drop in the bucket to the 30K. Man, a drop in the bucket is still a drop nonetheless that we need. So thank you very much. We got two kinds of money things to talk about for tonight, I suppose. Uh, on one hand, you do have the Maturino page for tonight. So if you guys are listening, if you're tuning in, uh, okay, they're ready to go. Make sure to hit up the Maturino page, exclamation mark, Maturino in chat. The code for today is MKGA4. To donate one dollar to the prize pool, let's hop into the game. Oh, I have to find the Matrina overlay. That's right. One sec, guys. I love Corsair. I love my Mega Command, but Matrina is actually sponsoring this. Boop. But there's a lot. Again, there's a lot to talk about regarding Matrina, so we'll get into this tonight. Anyway, so yeah, so the the caster side story here, the TLDR, uh, Zombie Rob, of course, is in. Paris. She's been casting Nation Wars. I hope you guys have been watching and supporting over there. She's doing a fantastic job. Oh, yeah. It's playing on the Korean server. Pretend I didn't say that, though. I don't want people to think I play StarCraft. Um, so she's still unavailable. She'll be back for Christmas. Like she's going home for Christmas, and she'll be available for the Corsair Cup. 
So you guys will see her this coming Monday if you're really missing some zombie girl. But I do hope you guys are watching over on Nation Wars. Uh, Zeph was not at all scheduled to come today, but she she said maybe I'll give it my best and I'll try, but was ultimately unable to make it. So uh, you are left with the Rifkin solo cast for today. Spawning here on the top, left side of Echo to kick off, make Korea great again! Number four, it's the blue Protoss, Dust's Hush. And in the bottom right, we got the red Terran, none other than Jokshi. Now, if you guys watched Still Making Korea Great, a totally unaffiliated tournament that we were casting yesterday, Hush's teammate, Bunny, actually dismantled Zest and won the tournament, won the qualifier, won the money, more importantly. So maybe these Dust guys have got a little bit of uh, a little bit of luck and a couple of aces up their sleeves. I will not count Hush out until we see how this game plays through. But uh, Jokshi has actually been streaming a little bit more frequently. If you guys haven't been watching some of his games, he's actually been looking better on his stream than he has in tournaments. That's not really something a lot of people can say, but the streaming scene right now is all topsy-turvy. You got Bion losing to Zergs all over the place. That Croatian kid in the Nation Wars messed him up, and his stream's not been looking so hot. But uh, you got Jokshi, who's in pretty good form right now, and we'll see how he's doing. Again, that, that's how he looks on stream. We'll see if his results can speak for it today. TVP appears to be uh, one of these matchups that is a little bit jaded, I think, depending on the player's point of view. On one hand, you've got all the Terran players griping and the Colossus are so good, I can't use my bio. And then all the Protoss are like, Liberators are so good, I can't use my Colossus. So for me, I think what I really enjoy about Echo being the opening map on this is it's a pretty nice map to set yourself up on three bases. You're likely to get that nice economy regardless of what your opponent's doing. Like three bases on this map is not at all out of the question. So Jokshi actually just checking for proxies right now. A little bit worried about those more than anything else. Back at home, though, while well, we talked about the possibility of Colossus and many other things, that may still be on the docket a little bit later down the road, but has instead opted for a Stargate as his weapon of choice. Uh, one of the things about the Stargate opener, I mean, we've seen it many times. The Oracle comes out, maybe gets a kill or two, doesn't even do anything, but has it in case he needs Phoenix. I think uh, I have been really enjoying the players who have been crazy enough. Zest has done this, Drogo's done this. The players who will go for proxies, they'll throw down four oracles out of this build and they'll make it real gross. But this is the safe version. This is the at home, as seen on TV version. And he's actually going to open with a phoenix. This is fine too. We've been seeing two to three phoenix is a nice way to dismantle the drops that come early. Inevitably, every Tam player pretty much drops Widow Mines. Not only can it do a lot of damage, but it does a lot of great scouting. And the phoenix can lift up the Widow Mines. They can chase down the Medivac. They have a lot of great defensive capabilities. So Hush is playing a bit safe here at home. Um, but as I was saying... Before we get into this, and while we have a little bit of downtime, we do have a couple different Macharino links today, so I want to make sure people aren't too confused about what's going on. The exclamation mark Macharino code, uh, link, excuse me, so like Macharino in chat, combined with the MKGA4 code, will increase today's prize pool. I don't imagine we're going to reach the skies that we did last time. For those who didn't see Make Korea Great Again 3, we reached $2,300 in prize payout for the players. That was insane. So I don't think we're going to reach those numbers again. I do hope that we'll at least use up the 200 coupon codes. Oh, that's stack and probe, though. <laughs> a little bit scary. The uh, Reaper goes to the main. A little bit of havoc. But uh, I do hope we'll use all the 200 codes up, guys. So make sure to get on that website. Use those codes while you've got a second. The other... Macharino page and this is the one I don't want you guys to get confused about is through the exclamation mark mega command This is for the gigantic fundraiser, which I'll be talking a little bit more later in regards to uh, One of the things almost gets picked off but the Marines just barely didn't have enough damage if only stim were done That medevac may have lived but stim is still a very wall uh, long time out This will pair up nicely with plus one But I also want to really just bring back home the fact that Jokshi is in fact playing bio this isn't so abnormal that you're like, oh my god, I can't believe he's building marines. But it is one of these things where we've been seeing people experiment, and whether you've been watching the streamers or not. Bio, I think, is the more comfortable way to play. It's just what they're all used to playing. But we've been seeing some weird mech variations come out here and there. 
Uh, kill all whales kills, or kill a whales kills, as I'm going to Chromecast this beautiful Canadian on my TV upstairs as I fall asleep. Well, have a good night, sir, and I'll try not to screech too much. Thank you for tuning in. Third base gets taken out of Hush. It's finished up at this point. Jokshi, though, no sign and no indication of building that third CC just yet. Lots of production coming out of this guy. Three barracks, all the add-ons in the world. Might even see some Marauder production start soon, but right now focus on those combat shields. Focus on that stim, and of course, very focused on making sure these Phoenix don't get any more freebies. Whether it's picking off an SCV or shooting back a medevac, either way, both are unacceptable in the eyes of Jokshi. The Oracle looks a little bit odd, but I mean, simply for revelation. Maybe a stasis trap or two. I don't really use it for damage this late into the game. Finds a little bit of breathing room. It's kind of interesting to me. Jokshi didn't even bother taking his fourth gas. Part of me says this is because he knew it would be too hard to defend. But also, Terran just don't need gas that badly. I'd say early on in the game is when you're the most gas starved. Later on in the game, you can't get it, you can't get rid of it fast enough. Uh, third CC starts up, by the way. I wasn't sure whether he was going to super all in off of this or not. But no Marauders get made. And he is trying to take this game to the next step. Widow mines get picked up, but it's a little bit dangerous as we see. There's a lot of Marines here. Hush giving away these Phoenix. Not worth it. Oracle goes down too. A couple of the Adepts transfer. I think he was hoping for a much better fight, but that's not the case. The Photon Overcharge goes off, but Jokshi doesn't give a good gosh darn. Probes are in full retreat mode. Pylons are really the only mode of defense here. He actually recalls the probes over to the natural. That was, that was pretty slick, I gotta be honest, but I think there's just too much supply. Hush absolutely blindsided by this massive attack. Jokshi may not have been looking to win the game with this move, but he might come really damn close. Widowmine's gonna burn. Those probes are stacked up very nicely. He's running away from his own Widowmine's. They go off on all the adepts. No problems over here. That's it for Hush. And Jokshi storms to victory in game number one. Oh my god. He's warping in still. Hush has not given up. He's like, I refuse. I refuse to accept that this is defeat. But 39 probes are dead and liberators are out. There's no phoenix left to shoot these bad boys out of the sky. And in game number one, I'm sorry, Hush. But it's all ogre. There's the GG's. Congratulations to Jokshi, who takes a very, very crisp, very clean game number one. This will, of course, make it Hush's map selection, though, for game two. So let me just poke him and see. Which map he wants. Uh, we do have an absolutely fantastic bracket today. And it is like my greatest regret. We can't cast all the games. But um, I think this leads to some pretty good matches. Plus we can always bounce around the bracket if we need to. Um, while we wait to see what map Hush is going for. Yeah, the winner of this plays stats even. Ooh. 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 Ah, if Jokshi's looking this good versus Hush, I hope he can bring it versus stats. Stats, by the way, for those who don't know, recently announced on Twitter, and I mean recently as in like half an hour ago, uh, mentioned that he found a new team and he can't wait to announce what it's going to be. So I'm excited to see who picked up stats. There's a lot of curiosity floating around right now. There's some rumors about some houses to open up. I can't speak on it because I kind of have behind the scenes information, but uh, I am really, truly curious to see who who stats plans to join with because you know we've seen some strange pickups like you've got solar going to splice you got patience rejoining dead pixels like a lot of these foreign teams kind of take in charge once again um as well as let's not forget the guy we're casting now hush and bunny are both on on dust gaming which is like a prominently north american team like uh, i i'm gonna assume i think it's still led by ricky very nice guy very nice guy uh, both players just saying they want a moment before we get going. That's okay with me. We are up to 36 codes used and $36 raised towards that prize pool, guys. So do me a favor. Make sure to stop by that match arena page. And uh, you don't even use your real money if you don't want to. Just use the free code, please. Let's get all 200 of those used up. I have to... Oh, that's right. I have to uh, donate $100 from Base Trade TV before I forget. Don't have the funds. Gotta go get those. All right. Well, that gives me time here, anyways. While they're while they're uh, figuring what they're doing. So where's the deposit button? Supply depot. Zit. That's what I'm doing because I'm tearing. 
Because yeah, the, the, that's what's been so beautiful about this for me. I love that we can we can kickstart a tournament. Kickstart's not the right word because this is Matcharino for fundraising, but we can we can kick off. There you go, kick off a tournament with a hundred dollars, and still have these prize pools. We we had the first two weeks reach four hundred dollars. The third week week reached two thousand plus. Like it makes me really proud because. It's it's just it's everyone every time someone says like the StarCraft 2 community's dead, dead game memes, all this stuff, I'm like, no, fuck you. Like look at this. Four times the prize pool. People still want to contribute however they can. They want to give these players money. Like, StarCraft 2 is still very much alive. And it's it's at by the way, like for those who don't know, who don't regularly watch Base Trade TV, our Korean peaks are like some of our lowest. I think most of our regular viewers come in during the European slash American times, which is like seven hours from now. So it's been phenomenal to me to see the Korean peaks and the uh, donations and the contributions to the tournament directly. Say when ready, Hush. Uh, we're just waiting on Hush now. Uh, I should probably have to tell the stream. Well, give it a moment here to uh, get it going. What's everyone mad about? Oh, the old gaming stuff. Yeah, you know what's funny? If you guys type, if you guys have never done this before, if you type slash like slash mods in a channel, it'll show you all the moderators on the channel. And uh, if you do it in the O Gaming channel, they have like a friggin' book worth of mods, but they never seem to do anything. I've actually rather not enjoyed my time watching Nation Wars in Twitch chat, and I've really enjoyed watching it just watching it full screen and doing anything else, because uh, their chat is pretty, pretty disgusting, I'm not gonna lie. So, shout outs to those of you who have been fighting the good fight, and thank you kindly, as I see the discussion going on in chat, but... Uh, at the end of the day, don't tire yourselves out. I suggest do your best to enjoy the games, enjoy the casting, and all that good stuff. But game number two, spawning down here to the southern location, we have the Red Protoss. Hush. And the top side, he's not staying at home very long. It's already across the map. The Blue Terran Jakshi, up uh, one game so far in the series. He's darting across here. Look at to put down that barracks. But this is weird. Because this is this is not typically something that works super well versus Protoss, but if you guys recall, players like Bion were doing this rather consistently on a lot of maps. And the idea is that the Reaper comes out so quickly, it'll pick off usually I want to say four is the number of probes you want to look for. By then, either Zealots chased you down, an adept's been made, or the mothership core spawned. But uh, this is this is uh, I will say unconventional because it's not guaranteed to work. It is really on Jock. She's saying like, look, this is either gonna really really work or it's not gonna work at all. We got Pig joining us in chat. What's up, Pig? I know it's like hella late for you, dude. How you doing? He says uh, base trade TV destroying some licorice right now. Hmm, you're missing out. Oh, but it's probably black licorice, so I don't think I really am. Go ahead and keep that in the garbage bag you found it from. There's a reason garbage bags are the same color as that licorice. I'm just saying. <laughs> Hush takes a natural, and he opens pretty standard, and he's going to move across the map to be very disappointed. He didn't probe scout a little bit quicker, but... Oh! 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 I take it all back! I just assumed this was going to be the classic version of a Reaper. This is going to be a quick factory with a reactor. Now, I'm hoping Jokshi is ballsy enough to go for Cyclones eventually, but he should be opening here with a couple of Hellions. Uh, or just straight to Marines. I have no idea what he's doing anymore. I'm just going to shut the hell up. I've seen so many versions of this. I have not seen. I have not seen a version that involves this many. I guess if he gets two and swaps it, it's still going to work out as predicted. No, he's still building more Marines. Okay, let's see how this works out. It's a Cyclone with four Marines. This can certainly bring the damage. Uh, he's only sitting on four workers for worth of gas, so he's not going to be able to produce that many Cyclones. And he goes for a Starport. What, the f what is happening? Okay, I really like... I really love proxies of any variety. If it's a robo on the other side of the map, if it's a dirty ass Stargate, it's a barracks over here, I'm down. I'm absolutely down. But I'm just sitting here scratching my head like, 
This is something I think is going to work because of how badly Hush is going to get caught off guard. Not because of how amazing this tactic is out of Jokshi. You guys would know that Hush is still not even really scouted the base. The Adept kind of got over here and then pulled back. Uh, now the overcharge pops off. This will buy a little bit of time, but honestly not that much. And though a full pylon wall off in the past may have been the answer, today, in this age, you've got a medevac to just carry everything over that wall. Pylon's gonna get absolutely shreked. He doesn't even go for the ones that are building, even though they would die faster. Comes on through. This deep powers warp gate. The Oracle might, the Oracle just maybe might be enough to hold on to this. I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking very unlikely at this point. These pylons can't get up. Hush is pulling the probes. I think Jack, she's done it. Two cyclones is too much. Forget what I said about that Oracle. It's not doing Jack's squad. Hush, he could have transferred to the natural and just mined like crazy, but he's losing all his production. He knows it too. Oracle comes in. Mothership core hammering away. The probes get pulled, and this is all kinds of messy. Lock onto the Oracle almost kills it. He runs away, but the Marines have got just enough damage. They take it down, and Jokshi, in a very scrappy proxy, locks down a very quick 2-0 here in the start of the cup. Truly, he is making Korea great again. Now, his opponent might not be out of game so quick because that was a very fast series. Uh, we've got Joon Hoo Kim. I don't know if that's like a just an alias versus Stats. Stats and them are already playing, and we're going to wait for the winner to play against Jokshi. Alternatively, if True readies up and is out of his game in time to fight Gumiho, I may swap to that series, all things considered. Um... But a lot of people are just playing their first round matches right now. Zest and Dark are the only ones to advance. Dark fights Patience in round three. Excuse me, maybe that's the one we'll swap to. We are spoiled. I am like a kid in a candy store with these Koreans on this bracket. It looks fan freaking fantastic. So, um, do stick around, guys. I'm get some. Uh, I can actually play music during the break since I don't have a co-caster for once. So I'm gonna uh, be back in a couple minutes. I guess first commercial break of the day. Stick around. See you soon.